So hello and welcome hey, back hey. to the drip. Y'all, we're so glad you're here today. Yeah. And uh, today we're gonna talk about Are what? we doing Southern accents today? Oh, I don't know. It just comes out sometimes. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought like I forgot you didn't get the memo. Oh, we're I, Southern I don't accents know. today or something. I would guess I was subconsciously thinking of y'all a few weeks ago. When welcome I, back, y'all. When I was just saying y'all a bunch of times. Okay. I did notice today when I was snow plowing, snow snow blowing. I don't know the difference between the two, but I was clearing my driveway there you go and i notice like if i get really cold or tired or like angry i just get like very southern sometimes yeah. so it's like uh, a built-in filter and the filter comes down I, I guess i don't know okay so hmm. maybe i'm just making that up but i was pretty sure i opened I'm up the door i'm gonna get you really mad sometimes and see if you like really start bubbling out the <laughs> southern <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, so we're talking about uh, what is Christian science today. Mm -hmm. And so it's come up a few times in some just conversation here and there um, with some folks in our life. And so Anthony thought it'd be great if we could address that today. Um, so hopefully you guys find this interesting and uh, yeah, just kind of uncover what it is and mm -hmm. talk about it and all that. So yeah, yeah. sounds good. Well, uh, yeah, thanks for tuning in guys. And I'm Anthony Patton. And I'm Jonathan Duncan, and, and this is The, the Drip. Drip. So Christian science. Yes, we did say that in the same like octave or whatever. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sometimes your voice is naturally deeper and mine is a little bit higher, but then other times we like say it exactly. Like when we did the promo video, we, we were pretty like, much nailed it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I think there was a couple different things that we said, like in unison. See, and that, so octave is like the key. Um. Well, octave is like so. There's um, seven different tones in a scale. Okay. So like if you start at the bottom of a scale and then you know you get to the seventh degree and then if you go to the eighth one, that would be like the same note as the first but an octave higher. Hmm. So it's like if I go uh uh, that's that's an octave. So like one is lower, one is higher. Oh. Yeah. Learn something so, new today. Yeah, there you go. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Fun musical fact, everybody. All right. I Good never times. knew that. Now you do. <laughs> that's why I'm a drummer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I so, guess you can't really, you're not. Uh, I'm not playing up an octave. Yeah, you're not really yeah. playing scales and stuff. Yeah. Unless you have like a marimba or something. But anyway, Christian science. Christian science. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, I mean, there's a, there's a theologian that says mm -hmm. this and I can't get it out of my head. Uh -huh. So I thought like. This is a good way to start. Yeah. It's a little harsh, but I think it's, you know, fitting and true. It's, he says, Christian science. It's not Christian nor science, just like yeah. grape nuts. Nice. Grape nuts aren't nuts nor or grapes. grapes. Yeah. <laughs> so, and, uh, but I think that's really the, the key standpoint of Christian science is, you know, when you study through what Christian science is, because it has these two names associated with it, kind of the main reason I wanted to cover this video today because yeah. people will say, oh, okay, well, it's it's some kind of Christian platform or some kind of subsect of Christianity yeah. or people are coming from the secular worldview and they're saying like, okay, this is some kind of science and, and they're coming in. So yeah, it sounds odd, but both sides are like dismantled in Christian science because mm -hmm. it's it's not scientific nor is it Christian. Yeah. So I figured good, good topic to chat about yeah, a little bit sure. and just see where the roots are here. So yeah. there's also some other cults and that are like <laughs> similar names so sometimes yeah. i think it can be confusing like oh isn't this the same as this or yeah you know we hear science and we think yeah. usually of one thing or another but there's like several different ones and this is very narrow um, uh -huh. but those like s those different subsex cults like mm -hmm. you know scientology people will say like oh like scientology like no yeah. not like scientology my favorite <laughs> <laughs> we'll cover that sometime okay great um but not like Scientology, um, and it's, you know, it does have, I think, some of the roots here are in some of the modern, like, uh, word faith and, mm -hmm. um, like, uh, mindset, you know, power of mind over matter kind of healing modes. Yeah, and, I think it's like borderline mysticism kind of stuff, yeah. too. Yeah. yeah. Like mystical, like new age healing. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I actually just read a book um, that somebody um was reading and i just wanted to like kind of see where he was coming from and mm -hmm. so it was um it's the universal christ by richard Rohr. Oh, and yeah. mm -hmm. so I, I started reading it and he keeps calling himself a mystic over and over and mm -hmm. over and yeah. just because he was doing that i started to realize like i bet you this guy has like some roots in like 
you know, Christian science or Scientology, um, scientific, like, um, control of the mind. Yeah. And what'd you find out? The more I read, the more I was like, that's exactly where this guy's coming from. Um, it's just a lot of that, like, uh, Christ is in everything and we're trying to um, yeah. draw it out. And, you know, he really made it one comment in the book that kind of like concreted that was his ideology was mm -hmm. he's like, whatever causes yourself to come out and be a better you is your God in the present. So like literally like this desk draws the best out of me while well, this is my God in the present. So it's kind of like this universalistic idea that like God is, well, Christ, he's, he makes clear that like Christ is in everything. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's, it's really a lot of mind over matter yeah. situation. He has this book called everything belongs that I read yep. a while ago. And I was, I used to like love that book, uh, back in the day. But, um, yeah, I went to a church who they very much like kind of idolized his philosophies and, mm -hmm. Uh, beliefs and things like that. So I'm like pretty familiar with it. You're like I've been there. Um, yeah, yeah, but I, you should read that book if you haven't uh, read it. I have it's, read it. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot of the same. Yeah, honestly. it's basically yeah. like the same thing. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, there's. I different... feel like people people might in my experience they like cite that one more. Yeah. But I mean, I could be wrong. No, I agree. That's that book is actually what led me to the Universal Christ. Oh, okay. by, gotcha. So, okay. um, to to know like oh I'll check this one out because I read the other one and somebody else was reading it. So yeah. it was that original book that led me to the next yeah. steps and but it's it was really similar honestly and mm -hmm. what and this is actually a good segue into the issues with christian science is he uses scripture mm -hmm. i mean continually yeah over the course of his book yeah and so the founder of christian science met mary i like get this confused all the time mm -hmm. mary baker eddie i yeah. always like flip them but mary baker eddie is the yeah. founder of Christian Science. A lot of two-syllable <laughs> yeah. short names. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that could uh, be first or or, uh, or first names, yeah. Yeah, there could be first names. Yeah. The lady with three first names. Yeah. Yeah, so Mary Baker Eddy, founder of Christian Science back in the late 1800s. Yeah. Um, so she, um, or early 1800s, sorry, early 1800s. So she founds Christian Science. And, it was kind of late, late uh, 1800s. What was it, 18? It was like 1879. Oh, 79, okay. Um, okay, so most of her work was in the 1900s then. Um, so she, oh no, that's when she founded. So she was born in the early 1800s because okay, most of yeah. her work and founding comes later on. Yeah. Sorry, trying to pull random Christian science facts out of my okay. brain. Um, so she's born in the early 1800s, like 1821 or something like that, I believe. Um, yeah. And she does a lot of her like founding of the, um, it's actually called the um, Church of Christ, comma, scientists right so um that's that's the church if you're going to look them up online yeah. and they'll have either standard like churches they meet out of or like mm -hmm. these reading rooms like sign yeah. uh christian science reading rooms yeah. a lot of people know them yeah. for their reading rooms it's kind of like one of their claim to fame things yeah. um, and sometimes those are together you know mm -hmm. the church yeah. and the reading room will be together sometimes they'll just have secondary like reading rooms yeah and they'll meet at like a um, a hall or a conference center kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but they so, use a lot of scripture in their yeah. teachings and, Very common. and things. And I mean, one of their main things, like, so if you go into a, a Christian science church, you're not going to, there's not a pastor, there's not like a, yeah. somebody going to get up and give a sermon. So they have a quarterly document that comes out um, from the um, Christian science publication center. And so the document really what they do on a Sunday morning, most of their services are Sunday morning for an hour. They'll have a document, they'll kind of open up the service and they'll do uh, an offering, so some lectionary things. And then they'll have, uh, they'll open up to the middle of that quarterly document and they'll have a list of verses on the left and then a list of passages on the right that are from a um, science and health and key to the scriptures book that Mary Eddie Baker wrote. Yeah. Um, so they, they read the verses and they read her statements in conjunction. And if you flip to the back of the quarterly document, it says the two books that are required to be a Christian science and to live your life are the Bible and science and health and the yeah. key to the scriptures. So those two books go hand in hand. Yeah. Um, it's science and health and the key to the scriptures is how you properly interpret the right. Bible. So, yeah. And that's what they use for their services. Yeah. It's like they'll use teachings and stories from the Bible, but then they'll interpret it through the lens of that book. Yep. And then everything that's in their reading rooms is all written by her. Yep. Um, so sounds very, very similar to some other ones that yeah. we've talked about, like 
uh, the watchtower will place publications and it's if you are um, in in the mode of uh, going down in uh, Jehovah's Witness or going that way a lot of it's read our publications read mm -hmm. the things we put out yeah. and use them to interpret the Bible right they also do a daily newspaper yep um, it's an international paper too yeah so but yeah, Christian it's one, science yeah it's one like Pulitzer prizes and stuff yeah which I was interested to <laughs> very hear about. intrigued by yeah, yeah very interesting um, but yeah, I mean, essentially it's a cult, <laughs> um, but it is interesting to hear, you know, the different and like learn the differences, um, in there, but, um, you know, their whole thing is, uh, you know, kind of like mystical healing and saying like sin is not really real, but it's like your perception of reality. Um, and if you... You know, it's almost like a punishment of like, if you believe in sin, then, you know, you're dealing with sickness and things based on your beliefs and you have to basically uh, kind of connect with God and he'll remove those things from you and he'll heal you. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, some of them are opposed to medicine and seeing doctors and things. And um, yeah. really sadly, I've been doing some research on, on Christian science. Within the last 40 years, a hundred people have died um, from guaranteed, um, easily treated medical conditions mm -hmm. that we just know are easily treated, like um, strep throat. You know, you need a simple antibiotic and you can be healed from this. Yeah. But if you don't, it can actually get worse and worse and worse and it can settle in your brain and you can die from this. And yeah. there's there was a Supreme Court case hearing actually mm -hmm. um, from something similar like this where a boy became sick and his parents were Christian scientists. They refused to seek proper medical treatment for him and he ended up passing away. Mm -hmm. um, and then they took quite a bit of negative flack because of this, understandably. Yeah. Um, because really, and this is kind of the standpoint, maybe we can just give a little background of how this process happened. But uh, I saw, I was watching a video, this is a common teaching where I'm sure you've seen this before. If you take a cup of water, and you stick like a straw or a pencil in there and you look across the plane, the straw almost looks like it's bent um, within the water. Like it yeah. doesn't look like it goes straight in. Yeah. So this is actually a teaching that they use to say, like if you have a broken bone, it's not really broken. Your mind is just perceiving it as broken. Yeah. And it's just like that pencil in the water, the pencil's straight and your mind is perceiving it as broken when it crosses the plane of the water. So mm -hmm. if you can just have enough mental fortitude, it's your mind is allowing you to think your bone is broken, but it's not really. Yeah. So it's kind of like everything and all pain and all sickness and all hurt is inside my mind, yeah. which is why you will never hear a Christian science believer say that they're sick because then they think that they're speaking sickness to life. So yeah. you can literally see them going around like with the worst head cold of all time or coughing, but they yeah. won't admit that they're actually sick. Yeah. So it's, it's quite sad, honestly, yeah. um, the lies that are being, you know, perpetrated down this road yeah so um i don't know if you've looked into it extensively but quick synopsis of marietti baker is she she's born and suffers tons and tons of health issues and then in suffering all these health issues she's kind of looking all over for healing and she marries a guy and he quickly dies um and uh then she marries another guy um uh, last name. So she has three different last names over the course of her life. Yeah. So she marries a guy, he dies pretty rapidly. Um, they have a son um, and he dies while she's actually in, uh, she's still pregnant. And so they have this son and she's pretty sick, she says, and can't take care of her son. So she gives her son away to uh, her housekeeper at the time. And then marries this other guy, Patterson, um, who's a itinerant, like a traveling dentist. And he travels around and she eventually divorces him because she says he's not present and you know he's not faithful to her. And then in uh, her 50s, she marries another guy. His last name's um, Baker. And so she's had three husbands over the course of her life. Her third husband came just after she meets this guy whose name is Phineas Quinby, who's like a mystic, kind of like uh, mind, mental kind of healer. Um, and she gets a lot of her techniques from this guy. They kind of work together for a while. Phineas Quimby dies. She marries one of her students, uh, one of their students at that point. Um, the last name's Baker. And kind of the two of them come up with a lot of these techniques and he eventually dies. And when he dies, she says he was mentally murdered by self-induced mental arsenic poisoning. 
Um, that's how he dies. So, um, according to her. So all of this kind of pivoted um, and turned this huge pivot point. Right after Phineas Quimby dies, she slips on the ice. And then um, she says, all oh, this is all from her to everyone around her, to all her students. She says she's critically ill. And she equesters herself in her room, refuses medical treatment. And then um, while in her room, she says she's reading through the Bible. And then as she's reading, she's reading the accounts of Jesus' healing. And she just has this great revelation that Jesus didn't come to seek and save the lost, like the Bible says, but that Jesus came to reveal to us that the natural process of this world is that we should, in our minds, seek healing. It's a, healing is a natural part of this world. Mm -hmm. And she says in realizing that, she became totally healed from this. Supposedly, she was at the death store, yeah. though she wouldn't let anyone come see her. Um, so she walks out, and from then on, Christian science is kind of birthed um, into the world, and she writes this book, uh, Health Science and Key to Scriptures, and, yeah. and says this is the authority. Right. And though she has been toting the Bible as, as our one and only authority and real, she then kind of uses her book to twist the scriptures and say, like, the scriptures have been twisted over the years, so she, through her and this council of elders, have determined what parts of the Bible are real and what parts aren't. Mm -hmm. uh, and now you need both those books because her book helps you to know what's real and what's not yeah. real. So yeah. it's kind of the foundation laid out for Christian right. science. So yeah. and then those the, are micro details. Yeah. There's a lot, and I'm, I may have missed some little odds and ends there, so don't hold me to, yeah. no. to perfection That's a good there, like, but, overview. Yeah. Yeah, and basically in her writings, she's just kind of teaching you how to apply those things that she was, mm -hmm. um, you know, divinely inspired or kind of revelatory knowledge um, and then using those things to help other people. Yeah. But the irony to me is that, you know, there's no real Christian or science part about it. And so it's yeah. kind of just an ironic thing to call your religion. Like but, Christian is literally Christ follower. Yeah. And they're like, so they've turned that into like this little tiny twist they mm -hmm. call it you know which is well though a normal christian would believe in the validity of the gospel jesus's perfect life and death burial resurrection ascension that really he wasn't the son of god he was just a man that came yeah. and we follow christ because he taught us how to access healing yeah so it's yeah they also don't believe in the trinity and they think that it like points to a polytheistic belief and viewpoint and you know Though she so. totes a lot of pantheism, which is like Christ is in everything, which is the same thing you're going to hear from like Richard Rohr. Yeah. Uh, really similar. Christ is kind of in everything. And we, yeah. we're accessing, this is this is a subgenre of Christian science that has developed through some of Mary's teachings, but it's literally that you are, you live inside the mind of God and everything is mental. There's actually no physical substance to this world. Everything is completely mental. Um, and that sounds mental because, you know, but that's the teaching is that everything's like a mental in nature. And so that way, and I just heard of this literally locally from a lady mm -hmm. that she says she doesn't lock her doors because all she has to do is not think that someone's going to rob her or steal her and her stuff safe. Um, because if she gets robbed, then she has to go back and process in her brain what she thought wrong that caused her to be robbed. So it's kind of this weird, really, really weird, like direction of thought causes what happens in your life to happen. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's like you said, it's a cult. Um, so it has some weird ideologies and I'd say that's top tier weird. Yeah. I, I control my universe by my thought. So, but there's micro versions of that and other, mainstream branches of Christianity. You know, yeah. I can control my surroundings by my thoughts. Yeah. Um, which, you know, the root of that really is I can control God. Yeah. Yeah. Some uh, similarities between that and Jehovah's Witness as I was looking into it, um, which we talked about. But mm -hmm. Yeah. Fun stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And really the end game here unfortunately is very hollow and empty and dead because they don't believe in heaven nor hell um, or in eternal life they believe that they're living in eternal life but but you can be um, as Mary told her followers to tell everybody you can be mentally murdered and that's how 
if you look up how Mary Baker Eddy died, Mary Eddy Baker died, um, is <clears throat> her followers wrote that she was mentally murdered. Um, that doesn't give them any more details than that. That's just how it's listed. So mm-hmm. there's a lot of sadness in the fact that, you know, this, um, there's, there's no eternity, there's no heaven, hell, there's no anything. It's kind of living, living in the mental moment and trying to control your surroundings and actions and, and really God just wants you healed of everything, um, which we know is not doctrinally sound for what the Bible teaches. So, okay. Sad. Yeah, I can help but think about some scripture and reflecting on this and, um, you know, what the Bible t- t- uh, talks about adding or subtracting from scripture. Um, and so it's usually not good things <laughs> come when we do that. Yeah. Um, and so just even more of a reason to really know what the Bible says and to use the Bible as the source of authority and not somebody else's interpretation of it. Um, so. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And I, when you read in the Bible, they're very large proponents of Christ and his works and actions, um, though they just pick and choose. But when Christ is in the Garden of Gethsemane and he's praying to the Father, you know, if, if it's possible, take this cup from me. Like, he's going to. He's he's not going into healing. He's going into extreme suffering yeah. and pain and destruction of his body and ultimately death. And if God's true design and desire for all humanity is that the, the mode of humanity is just healing, well, that is so contrary to what Christ came to do. He came to die um, for us. So he's praying uh, and he's not praying God, you know, if I just think it hard enough or know it hard enough that I'll be healed and I'll be good, it's no, I'm going to go do what you've, <clears throat> what you've asked me to do, God. Um, but you know, if it's possible, take this cup from me, but not my will be done, but yours be done. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a good remembrance uh, yeah. of, of the validity of the word, not of, right. well, how we want to use it. Yeah. Uh, and that's, there's so many biblical proofs, but I think, <laughs> This sounds really cheesy, but a, a non-biblical proof of this is they say all sicknesses and health and cancer, uh, bad and negative things come from our own brains, from mentally within our own brains. But just scientifically, we know like jellyfish can get cancer and jellyfish don't have a brain. So, you know, just you know, my own minor scientific proof of these kind of things is yeah. like, well, even in the natural world that we see, her thoughts and ideologies don't even process out properly. So, yeah, yeah. If it all comes within your brain, then where do jellyfish get cancer from? Yeah. So, yeah. Just, just also, little things like that. Yeah. yeah. Also, by Jesus suffering and dying, that's the the way that we can have real, true spiritual healing. Yeah. Um, and they're pretty much denying that um, by the the mystical healing and um, you know thinking patterns and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And, so that was one of the another like major um, kind of like red flags for me that I that I noticed in looking into it. But yeah, I agree. And I'd say, and part of the reason I wanted to cover this topic is this: is Christian science is actually on a decline. Um, praise the Lord! But what's happening is um, individuals like Richard Rohr and others are doing this. It's a resurgence that's not being called Christian science, but mm-hmm. it's. Uh, the universalistic nature of Christ, and it's not a, it's not a church, it's not a direct, you know, movement or subgenre of Christianity, but it's it's new agey kind of thoughts that are creeping in, yeah. and he's not the only one that's writing books like this. There is the market is just flooded with these books yeah. that actually have a lot of the same ideologies as the mysticism found in Christian Science, but it's just kind of like updated and revitalized and yeah. like it's resurfacing mm-hmm. as a core concept instead of as a religion yeah. that she she founded people are shying away from the religion side of it and just going to these core concepts yeah. uh, that you're seeing in these books yeah a lot of the progressive christian um movement is kind of latching onto that and using that to support their beliefs and mm-hmm. lgbtq plus affirmation and things like that yeah um, so they're really using that to kind of base their theology and what they believe their interpretation of the scripture is mm-hmm. um, to kind of support all that. So that's uh, another area that's kind of using, yeah. using that stuff as well. 
So, well, when you start to do that, you start to be able to find um, truth in everything, which is just subjective truth. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's what it is. Like if I can find Christ in everything and Christ uh, helps me in everything and whatever draws the best me out of me is Christ to me. Well, that's all subjective in nature. There's no real truth in it. And there's, there's no, what Christ says, I am the way, the truth and the life. Nobody gets to the father except by me. Mm -hmm. And so when you take the objective truth of God's word and dismantle it with subjective truth, you know, there's, it's hopeless. You're, lo you're completely lost and set adrift in a sea of chaos and destruction of your life. But the Bible tells us that's going to happen. It says in the last days, and I'm not saying uh, eschatologically we're in the last days, but in the last days, could be, <laughs> could be. And it says, you know, people are going to heap up from themselves teachers that teach. And it, I, I love that passage there where it says heap up from themselves. And, and how many teachers are teaching this kind of thing right now well it's gonna they're gonna heap up for the themselves teachers that teach them what their itching ears want to hear like if you want to do something and you want to justify it away you can find a teacher that's going to help you to do that or you can stand on the truth of god's word so the good standpoint for all cults is if they say you need this to get a proper interpretation of the bible it's a cult that's pretty straightforward um the problem is people get so led astray because it feels good and sounds good, and also it allows them to live the lifestyle they want to live. Yeah. So that's that's one of the core key reasons people get so sucked into these ideologies and books yeah. and teachings. So, yeah. um, sadly. Yeah. So. Yep. 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 Fun. Yes. So, <laughs> kind of a downer video because yeah. it's like about a not a good well thing, but it's good. It's important to discuss. Important to talk about and. I'm sure you guys will agree that it's interesting to kind of dive in and do the dirty work and um, find out what's going on with these uh, with these other beliefs and religions and things. Mm -hmm. um, so, and hopefully it'll build up your own faith and just help you solidify your own beliefs even further and what you already know about uh, scripture and the Lord. So, mm -hmm. Amen to that. Yes. Yeah. And if you are currently seeking for truth and struggling to find it, then this is what I tell everybody. Let's hear it. Pick up your Bible, open to the Gospel of John, start reading. And when you get done with the Gospel of John, start it over. Yes. And just read it over and over. Just pray and ask God to reveal himself to you. And if you can't find objective truth in God's word, you can't find it anywhere else. And uh, if you don't have an object of truth within your life, you're gonna, you're going to be led astray. You're gonna be set adrift, and uh, that's how all these things happen. It's, you know, the uh, cults and subsects and different uh, uh, new agey ideologies pop up because we have denied the truth of God's word and gone and chased after our own desires. So hold fast to the word of God, and you will not be led astray. It's true. So. Like the song says, "All other ground is sinking sand." <laughs> Yes. So. So, so true. So, yeah. Well, I'm sure some of you guys, we are not scholars of Christian science nor uh, scholars at all, but I'm sure there's some areas we you missed might be, here. I'm definitely not. <laughs> I'm, I'm not. I'm like, I've researched it some, but I am not a professional here by any means. So if, uh, if there's things we missed or uh, targeted areas that uh, you think we did not hit properly, please love to hear about that and yeah. uh, have a conversation about it. So comment away and uh, we can continue this discussion uh, moving forward. Sounds so, great. But we'll see you on the next one. All right. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs>